get ready to laugh with Gotham Comedy Live's Best of the Best. With your host, Lynn Coplitz. Gotham Comedy Live's Best of the Best is all happening right now. Ladies and gentlemen, Lynn Coplitz. Hi, welcome to Gotham Comedy Live. I am Lynn Coplitz, your host for the hour, where we are going to go back and look at the past four seasons of all the comedy here at Gotham. Let's start with season one. I think you're going to like it. I'm in it. This is a bold experiment in television, you know, because as you're experiencing this, people at home are experiencing it, you know? People at home can see me suddenly making a connection. <laughs> Totally out of nowhere, just immediately recognizing. Now that's a girl who had her bangs cut so that they swooped to the right. <laughs> but unlike the television viewing audience, they won't feel this. <laughs> no, 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 you'll have to come to New York City for that. Especially you, sir. I would love to uh, bite your shoulder. Uh, I would soft kiss you, just very, not even in a rough way. <laughs> That shirt's not your size, you know that. It's, it's not, like you do need a large, but you said, fuck it, medium. Ugh, I really hate thin people, make me sick. I do, I hate thin guys. I, I hope you get hit by a donut truck. I, that would, that's my fantasy. After the show, you're like, it was a good show, and you're like flexing in a window, and it fucking hits you. And because of your awesome chest, it steps and flips over, and donuts fly into my mouth. Ah and I step over your gorgeous dead body. But I wouldn't even have to lift my leg up so you're so thin, I could just walk over regular. I like fat dudes, I like, <laughs> I don't like you, I hate you, you suck, you suck, I hope you die. I love you, I love him, you'll be fat someday, I love you. <laughs> fat people, we're better people, we're nicer people. We are, you don't see fat guys with guns. Give me your money. And 20 minutes later, the cops show up. Where is he? He's right there. He, uh, he took three naps and threw up in his mouth. And then bought a hot dog with my money at my hot dog cart. I would have gave him the hot dog. No need for the gun and the soft kiss in the ear. Big boys don't cry, Shh. So anyway, I was in the park last night chasing this white guy. Uh, <laughs> You guys aren't too fast, but you run a really long time. Yeah. I would have had to have been Kenyan to catch this dude. I mean, run right next to him. What type of shoes are those? These rocks are hurting my feet. Okay, I see you at the finish line. That's the sound brothers make when they run. You hear that? It's a brother running. <laughs> Mommy, what's that? Black guy running. <laughs> Mommy, what's that? Rest of the basketball team. Oh, you're so young and sad. Look at you. She's so sweet and beautiful. How old are you? 27. 27. Oh, you giggled because you're at the end of young. Um, <laughs> 27 is the end. It's so sad. It's the end of young. Are you white? You're a white girl? Listen to Auntie Lynn. I don't know if you can tell. I'm not really doing comedy anymore. Surprise. I'm more about information now. My life's over. And... I don't have my own children. I see the whole, like the prophets who've come before me, I have things to tell you. Now listen to me. <laughs> Not Jesus prophet, more like Simon and Garfunkel. You're too young. <laughs> listen to me. Listen, I'm zip, 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 zip. <laughs> This girl. See this girl next to you? She can laugh, whatever she wants. God knows how old she is. She's, she, get a shot of her. She's an Asian girl. She's probably 4,000 years old. No one. <laughs> These ladies too, get them. Fucking women of color. I can't stand it, they don't age. Nubian princess, she'll look like that forever. White girls right here, stop laughing, white girls. Stop laughing. Tell, let me tell you why, because white women, we age like bananas. Listen to Auntie Lynn. 
Right now you're laughing. 20 years from now, you're gonna be looking in the mirror going, what the fuck was so funny? Because you're a little green banana till you're in your 30s. You're a green banana, anything is possible. You could end up in a bread mix and cereal. Someone might eat you all alone, who knows? It's so exciting. Then in your 30s, you're right. That's why boys listen to Auntie Lynn. If you're dating a woman in her 30s, a white woman, and you feel like she's trying to trap you, that's because that bitch is trying to trap you. <laughs> she knows she's right. You gotta peel the banana. We gotta go, 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 go. Before there's a bruise. Have you ever seen a bruised banana? For as long as it takes us to ripen, we rot that fast. Once there's a bruise on the banana, what do you have? You have like three days before it's not even recognizable. People are walking by the kitchen. What's on top of the refrigerator? The dog keeps barking at it. It don't look right. I think uh, women get the short end of the stick on the whole sex game. You know, guy has sex with a lot of girls, he's a cool guy. Girl has sex with a lot of guys, everybody makes fun of her. I hate when guys pull this move. They go, hey, you know, I had sex with that girl, I'm the man. And you go, well, she had sex with him too. And they go, oh, what a slut. <laughs> oh. Well, how come she's a slut now? How come she want a slut when she had sex with you? You never hear a guy say that. Whew, she fucked me. What a whore. <laughs> wow, that's gross. You've got some problems. Get your shit together, all right? This is a wake up call, okay? Come on. We're so mean to promiscuous girls in this society, you know? Slut, whore, she's loose, she's easy, what a skank. Why are we so mean to these girls? Don't we all like sex? Why are we getting mad at the one group giving it away, yeah? yeah? No, we all like Banana Republic, but if they have a sale, nobody calls them a whore, yeah? I don't get it, we got, we got a black president now, gay marriage is legal here, yet sluts are still oppressed. That's the one group in this country that still gets stepped on, and I'm the only guy sticking up for these women, all right? Yeah, yeah, come on. Yeah, even, uh, even women won't stick up for them. Those sluts will ruin it for everybody. No, you could put out too. <laughs> yeah, please do, come on. I genuinely don't understand it. I feel like if we're gonna make fun of a group of women, let's make fun of the prude girls, right? They're the boring, annoying ones. Let's kick them off their high horse. Why do, why do we reward these women, you know? Oh, I don't have sex till three months into a relationship. Yeah, because you have nothing else to offer. Get a personality together. Come on, kick it up a notch. Let's move it along. Because let's be honest, prude girls, they're like mom and pop shops. We all pretend to like them, but they're more expensive and they close early. <laughs> all right? Yeah. Promiscuous girls are like Walmart. All right? When they move into a neighborhood, everybody starts complaining. But at four in the morning, when you're in a pinch, you're glad they're there. <laughs> yeah. We'll be right back with Gotham Comedy Live's Best of the Best. Welcome back to Gotham Comedy Live's Best of the Best. Welcome back. I'm glad you're still here watching the best of Gotham Comedy Live. Now, what do relationships, New York City, and traveling have in common? Give up? Season two of Gotham Comedy Live. Let's watch it. Very excited. I'm going to watch it while my Xanax kicks in with this wine. I'm worried about the president, okay? Everybody's upset with Washington. A lot of people are upset with the president. The left is upset because they feel like he hasn't been liberal enough. The right is upset with him because they feel like he is being too liberal. I am upset with the president. You wanna know why? Because twice now, I voted for a black president. You hear me? A black president. And he has been acting very beige. I want a black president. I'm talking about Mike Tyson Black. Suge Knight Black. I want a president that is so black, when I see him cross the street, I lock my fucking doors. Cause I'm nervous. That's how you get shit done. Fear and intimidation. Fuck trying to get along. These Republicans don't like you. They ain't trying to help you. They are cock blocking each and everything you are trying to accomplish. It is time to get gorilla on their ass. I want a black president. I'm talking about Sam Jackson, Pulp Fiction, black. I want a president that don't take no shit. I want a president that is so black. When he walks on the floor of the United Nations, foreign dignitaries look at him and go, not this motherfucker. Sign the treaty, sign the treaty, give him what he wants. This is what we need. This is what we need. I want a president that is so black. I'm talking about Wesley Snipes before he fucked up his taxes black. I voted for Blade. I want a superhero 
in the White House. He should be wearing tights and a cape, flying around the Capitol, making shit happen. That is what we want. I think we're gonna be all right. And it's amazing, uh, the most amazing place I went, for the first time I went to Alaska. And uh, yeah, and I saw a moose for the first time. By applause, who here has ever seen a moose in the wild? Oh, oh, you've seen a moose? Let me ask you this, yes or no, was it a lot bigger than you thought it would be? Hell yeah, they're dinosaurs. I thought a moose was the same size as a large horse. I thought this was me petting a moose. You know what this is? This is me rubbing the back of my hand on a moose's balls. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they don't like that. They do not like, and, and it's strange, because I love it. Um, uh, how it feels on the back of my hand. Uh, yeah, they feel like peaches that taste like ass. So, I'm in, I, I'm in Alaska, and there's a sign on my hotel door that says, beware of moose. And uh, if you're a New Yorker, you probably would do the same thing I do. I did, I took a picture of it and posted it on Facebook. Oh my God, look what these hillbillies are dealing with. Um, I wake up at 5 a.m. I decide I'm gonna go to my rental car, go for a little drive, see a little bit of Alaska. I open my door, between me and my rental car is a moose. <laughs> now, if you grew up in an urban area and there's a large mammal between you and your rental car, you probably would do the same thing I did. Ha! <laughs> Get on out here, moose. If you'd read the sign on my hotel door, you would have learned the first three things you're not supposed to do. Make eye, direct eye contact, make any wild body movements, or any loud noises. Ha! I can't even describe what the moose did other than to say it was the most gangster move I've ever seen an animal in the wild do. Yeah, yeah, the moose is over here. It's quiet. It's quiet in Alaska. There's no subways, no, but there's nothing but mosquitoes. <laughs> I come out of the hotel. Ha! And the moose just does this. Just goes. No emotion at all. That was the scary thing. It was, it was like, I'm gonna kill you. Here it comes. I don't want to, that's just what I do. You should have read the sign. Why are you crying? Why are you crying? Why are you crying? Mm. Thank you. I know it worries me, this stuff, man. You know, I had a drone fly over my house in Los Angeles last week. That's how much we're losing our privacy. They're looking into our backyards. It's a scary time. And we're doing this, of course, uh, you know, we have a lot of these security measures to protect our freedom. They say, you know, we want to protect our freedom. America's the most free country in the world. Yeah, well, if it's so free, how come it's the only country where you got to take your shoes off when you go to the airport? Because 10 years ago, some guy lit his foot on fire on an airplane and nothing fucking happened. <laughs> now, now, every time you go to the airport, you got to tiptoe through the airport in your slippery socks just because you want to go to fucking Cleveland, right? And take your laptop out of your bag. Take your laptop out of your bag and tiptoe around in your slippery socks and go through some cancer-causing x-ray machine that costs $4 million a pop. The thing can see through your clothes. The $4 million x-ray machine in every airport can see through your clothes. You gotta show everyone your cock. Is that freedom? Every time you go to Cleveland, you gotta show everyone your penis? This x These x-ray machines, they can see through your clothes, but they can't see through your shoes. I'm calling bullshit, man. Someone's making some money on x-ray machines, that's what I figure. Then you get on the plane, they say, please turn your cell phone off, it could cause the plane to crash. You go through all that shit to get on board, then they let every passenger on the plane with a potentially lethal device. And they leave it up to the honor system. Cosby will say the first couple words, he'll mumble in the middle, then he'll say the words at the end. See, that's just, it doesn't matter what he says, it's how he says it, right? He'll be like, and then the children, and then you find them. <laughs> Some people, 
That's it. Clap, clap. Let's me think. Helps me think. Helps me think in the next bit. Helps me. I can't see the cue cards. No. Uh, that's for the people who saw the last show. All right. No. Uh, whoa. Didn't even know that would make sense to some of you. Okay. Uh, <laughs> The, uh, some people don't even bother to uh, say the beginning words, like uh, Larry the Cable Guy, right? And you're like, that's gonna be, that's what that is right there, get up, get her done. I'm making sense to some of you. Other people are like, I don't think he's making a lot of it. <laughs> Maybe we hire a narrator to narrate the show. Hire Morgan Freeman, stand back there. That's when the audience realized that Frank Galliendo had no idea what was going on. The truth of the matter was, he wasn't sure what he was going to talk about either. He was just going to walk from one side of the stage to the other side. <laughs> While all the people in the front row looked down so he didn't talk about him. I wish I had Morgan Freeman in my life just to narrate me through situations. Because my wife will ask me those questions. You've heard comedians talk about him a million times. You've probably talked about him yourself. But my wife will ask me that question, do I look fat in these jeans? Well, that's when Frank realized he'd be sleeping on the couch for a while. <laughs> truth of the matter is, it didn't matter what he said. See, he thought she was looking for an answer. <laughs> Truth of the matter was, she was looking for an argument. <laughs> see, from time to time, Frank's wife would give Frank a little test to see how good of a husband he was. <laughs> Frank had failed many times. <laughs> we'll be right back with Gotham Comedy Live's Best of the Best. Welcome back to Gotham Comedy Live's Best of the Best. Welcome back again to the best of Gotham Comedy Live right here in the basement of the lovely Gotham Comedy Club. Okay, now we are on the best of season three of Gotham Comedy Live. I'm actually in this season, and there are three guys in this season, and I actually had sex with one of them. Watch and try and guess which one it was. Tweet in your responses. I'd love to see if you get it right. I'm sure you won't. I hated myself back then. Think that way. I went to this gay bar called Woody's to be supportive of a gay friend of mine. And while I was there, a man grabbed my butt and winked at me. <laughs> I was a little weirded out at first, but then I started to feel kind of special. <laughs> no one's ever grabbed my butt like that before. But then, a few moments later, I saw the same man grab another guy's butt. I was devastated. I'm not gay. I didn't want to be with him. I just didn't want him to be with anybody else. Weird, it's such a weird job. Like, even though it's TV, you guys are all looking at me like, I gotta solve the problem. I can't believe I do this for a living. This wasn't even my goal. I wanted to be a, like a badass. That's what I, I wanted to be like a dude who, like as a kid, I thought I was gonna be vanquishing evil and protecting the innocent. Like a, in this position, you know what I mean? With like a girl over my shoulder I rescued in a teddy and a machine gun. She's like, oh, I'm scared. I'm like, calm down. You know, you know what I mean? Like I, I'm wet, I don't know why, and I just, I bust through a window. I just wanna, hey gay, you know, my shirt's ripped obviously, cause if you're a badass, your shirt's always ripped cause you get in fights, guys cut you, like what the, fuck? And, you know, and then, and girls are like, they get overcome with lust, like I can't wait, and they'd rip your shirt, and you gotta have a huge shirt budget is the point I'm making. <laughs> but I'm not, it, the bummer is I'm not, you get it to be an adult and you realize I'm not built for that kind of, I don't know if with a woman and a machine gun, I don't know if I could even get air. I don't, you know what I mean? I don't, I don't know if I have that bone structure. That's what kills me. I didn't grow into the guy I wanted to be. I'm not built for, you know, heroics. I'm, I'm built for dance. Look at this shit. I, I can't, like, I, I'm serious. Like, I'm a, I know. I've never taken, I've never taken dance. I can do four of those. I'm, I'm just a natural. I can, I'm, it sucks. I, I don't like it. I've always wanted to be really muscular. I lift weights. I overeat. I just stay narrow and supple. I'm built. For, look at the humanity in my eyes. It sucks, man. I'd love to be a dancer, too. I think it'd be amazing, but I'm just, you know, I, I'm straight, and we live in such a homophobic society. There's so many rules to, I can never be creative the, the way I'd want to be. I can't, you know, I can't do, I, that move is a move I'd like to button my dances with, but I, you do that, and you gotta answer all these questions. 
There's so many, there are so many straight guy rules. It's so ridiculous. We were so homophobic. Like I can never frolic through wheat. I was thinking about that the other day. I can never just forget my troubles. Like I can't even run to a wheat field and drag my hand behind me like this. It's not written anywhere. I just know somehow that's suspect. I don't, I'll never know what the top of wheat feels like. It sucks. You know? I think I can, I think I'm allowed to touch the side of wheat. I think I can do this, because he did that in Gladiator. I think I'm allowed to, you know what I mean? But the minute I go from, it's so interesting, the details. The minute I go from here to here, you know what I mean? That's when they're like, wait a minute, he fucks guys, you know? It's not fair. And I don't, I don't, for the record, I don't fuck guys unless it's an emergency. And even then, they're like, you're gay. I was in Europe. What are you talking about? I wasn't even, I was frowning the whole time. I'm a parent. I got a baby. We named him Blue Ivy. We named him Blue Ivy. Come on, that's not his name. We wanted to give him a name that, that told other children he liked children, so we named him Sandusky. And, uh, uh, whoa. I didn't know this was an alumni show. Oh, my God. Whoa. My kid's cute, his name is Lincoln. He's a cute kid, but I feel self-conscious talking about him because I feel like people lie about their babies. You know what I mean? Like whenever somebody has a baby, they give you the same bullshit phone call. They're like, oh, you gotta see this cutest baby in the world. Oh my God, it's so cute. But who do you believe? Because everybody says that, but there are a lot of ugly babies out there, man. But you never get that call. You never call the hospital like, oh my God, she's a baby. How is it? Dude, don't even come. <laughs> this thing is fucking disgusting. Uh, apparently our sister's been having an affair with a gremlin the last three months. Don't put water on it. There'll be like eight million of them running around the hospital right now. Just not, it's a mess. I get to go home now. I live close here. I live on Sullivan Street, 229, apartment 3B. That's gangster, isn't that some real address? I'm not scared of you people. I've lived alone in New York for 20 years. What are you gonna do to me? There's nothing you can do that I haven't planned for. You gonna rape me? You can't rape me. I'll kiss you on the mouth. How are you gonna rape that? How dare you, rapist? You think I don't have a rape plan? That's the worst predator on a planet next to a pedophile and a polar bear and I got plans for them too. You crawl in my window, you're crawling out half the rapist you were when you crawled in. I'm gonna mouth kiss you, I'm gonna whisper I love you, I'm gonna hold you. Did you guess who it was? Did you tweet? Well, stick around. Season four is coming up. I didn't fuck anyone in that season, but it's still good. We'll be right back with Gotham Comedy Live's Best of the Best. Welcome back to Gotham Comedy Live's Best of the Best. Welcome back to the Best of Gotham Comedy Live. Now we are up to season four of Gotham Comedy Live, and this is the premiere. So you have not even seen these clips yet. This is exciting. Oh, Kellyanne, I'm a little slow, a little low there. Can you give me more? I'm slow too, but low. And don't try and roofie me. You know, I've built a resistance. Isn't she pretty? I hate her. Thank you, dear. Okay, now we're ready. Mama wants you to turn the TV on. Let's watch. How you going, guys? Are you good? All right. Thank you for having me. I am from Australia. I've said some stupid stuff in your country, I really have. Here's the, this, this is the worst thing I've said, okay? I said this the other night, I was out doing a gig. I was the only white person there, okay? The whole audience was black, every comedian on was black. Now in Australia, we don't have a lot of black people. I think they're cool. I was trying to act cool with these guys backstage, okay? They were talking about smoking weed. I didn't know how to get involved in the conversation. And I said this, I can't believe I said this, all right? One of the guys was sitting there rolling a joint and he looked up at me and he goes, Hey, bro, do you burn? And I seriously said, Ah, no, no, I, uh, I wear sunscreen. And, <laughs> like, as I said it, my brain's gone, No, you idiot! It means that you smoke weed. It's got nothing to do with your complexion. Leave the room! <laughs> but I had a good night with these guys. They were fun at the end of the night. One of the comedians comes up to me, he goes, hey man, nice meeting you, went to shake my hand. Now in Australia, you shake someone's hand like this. That's it. <laughs> no other moves or anything. You've all lived here your whole lives, you can make a judgment on someone and go, huh, he's probably a flick and a twist kind of guy. 
and you can bluff your way through. I don't know what I'm doing, okay? So I go to shake this guy's hand. He started doing his moves. I panicked and went, oh, what the fuck's going on here? And I went like this. I did that. What the hell am I doing that for? What am I, in point break? I knew that was wrong. I looked at him and I panicked even more and just went, uh... Mentally, uh, I am an adult male. I have it together. But emotionally, I am still just a teenage girl. There's a huge mess inside. I will give you an example. I am heterosexual, but a friend of mine told me this gay guy we know said I was hot, and I had like a million follow-up questions. <laughs> Let me get this straight. Did he say I was hot, or did he say I was cute, or did he say I was boyfriend material? What were his exact words? Am I blushing? I feel like I'm blushing a little bit. Some guys, they're, they're really homophobic. If they heard that, they wouldn't go near him. But that guy made my month. I'm getting my life together because of him. If I'm going somewhere and I think he's gonna be there, I'm not gonna do anything with him when I see him, but I definitely think about what I'm wearing before I leave the house. That guy believes in me. I'm not gonna let him down. I guess you guys believe in me too, all right. I, uh, I recently had an epiphany. I found out what type of person I was. It took me a while, but I figured it out. I found out what type of person I was last week when I watched our dog dry hump our kid for two minutes before I got up off the couch to find a video camera. That's, that's who I am. That's me as a person. <laughs> Thank you. I, that deserves applause. <laughs> I like being a dad, though. I like watching my kid grow up. I like watching him go through phases. He's going through a phase right now where he likes to tell me who and who does not have a penis <laughs> in public louder than me on this microphone. We were at Hooters recently. Um, kids eat free on Sundays. Hooters waitress walks by, loud as it can be. She doesn't have a penis. I'm like, I know. I know. Good call. Inside voice on the penis talk, okay? But good, you nailed it, good job. Two seconds later, you have a penis? I know! Two for two, good job, but seriously, inside voice, penis talk. Mommy doesn't have a penis. I know, mommy doesn't have a penis. I don't like mommy. Why don't you like mommy? Because she doesn't have a penis. Well, that's why I do like mommy, so... Let's agree to disagree on mommy. <laughs> oh, thank you. I haven't joined a gym because of this. I'm in my 30s, so my options are either join a gym or get married. And the gym at least lets me go month to month. You high-fived on that. You were gonna get married, and then instead you were like, let's just join a gym. <laughs> Family pass. I never thought I would join a gym. In high school gym class, we did a weightlifting unit, and I would just sit around and not do it. And one day the gym teacher pulled me aside, and he said, Dan, when you're an adult, you were gonna pay your hard-earned money to join a gym and lift weights. So you should really take advantage now. And I had no idea that the guy who wore sweatpants to work was gonna be 100% right. <laughs> When I signed up, they told me I'd get a free body fat analysis and fitness test. And they asked me if I want to do that in a group or one-on-one. -on -one. <laughs> Who's choosing to do a body fat analysis in a group? Most people wouldn't do it alone with a mirror in the room. <laughs> fitness test, that's a big scam. They just want you to hire them to be your personal trainer. And if I'm gonna pay someone to pretend to be interested in my body, it's not gonna be this guy named Steve. <laughs> I already got a guy interested for free. <laughs> I really just joined the gym because I went through a bad breakup and I thought it would be a good distraction. And uh, I had no idea the trainer was gonna ask all these personal questions. He asked me, Dan, what are your goals? I don't know, 
Revenge? I can't really relate to anybody at the gym. There's this guy I see there, and he's lifting weights every day, but he has a mullet. How do you care so much about how you look, but care so little about how you look? We'll be right back with Gotham Comedy Live's Best of the Best. Welcome back to Gotham Comedy Live's Best of the Best. You are watching the best of Gotham Comedy Live. We have watched all four seasons, and now we're watching just specific clips. These clips we're going to watch are some of my favorite because they're featuring some of the funniest vaginas in the business. Suck it, Jerry Lewis. Suck it. <laughs> I'm trying to date. I, uh, I recently joined a free online dating website. I, uh, I joined OkCupid. I'm glad I joined OkCupid. I learned a lot about myself. Like, I learned that I'm a girl. <laughs> I've never felt like a girly person, but now I know that I am because the sole reason I didn't want to join that website is because I still wanted the story. I think every woman in here wants the story of how you met your boyfriend or how you met your husband, and you want it to be a good one. But I'm a comic. I want my story to be epic. <laughs> I want my story to be something like I was standing on the subway platform and I was texting, but I lost my balance and I dropped my phone in the tunnel. And then as a train was coming, this dude jumps in the tunnel, nearly gets hit by a train, jumps out, hands me my phone and his name and number are already in it. <laughs> and his name would be Odyssey. things in my 20s. I'm not proud of it. I'll admit it. I, uh, I slutted it up nice and good. I was usually heartbroken. I'd be madly in love and I'd get dumped. I'd just get right back out there. And I think my thinking was, if I can just get enough dicks inside of me, one of them will eventually touch my heart. My dad loves that joke. <laughs> loves it. Loves it so much. My dad is a 75-year-old devout Irish Catholic widower from the Bronx. And he's old now, but he was old at 35. He came out of the womb with a mortgage and ulcer doers on the rocks. And I don't know if you guys know this. Irish Catholics don't have um, feelings. <laughs> like, I was proposed to three years ago, and I said no. Which is a tough thing to do, but it's what you should do if that's the way you feel. But I made the mistake of calling my dad afterwards, and I was just in hysterics. I was like, Dad, the only man who's ever loved me proposed, and I said, no, and I'm gonna die alone, I'm never gonna have a baby, and I really wanna get a dog, but I'm never home. <laughs> and my poor dad was just ill-equipped. He's like, you're gonna be sad. <laughs> you're gonna be sad for a good long while, but then you get yourself a new hairdo and you'll be fine. <laughs> and that's when I became a redhead. I've been on exactly five OkCupid okay dates, so that means I've written five emails to my roommates titled, Please Seek Justice If Murdered. <laughs> For anybody that is trying to online date, I want to give you some hope. I did meet a dude online. Uh, it didn't work out, so it's a weird way to give hope. Uh, but you have to understand, there's still people that don't use their credit card on the internet. I fucked a dude from the internet. I'm like a success story and a survivor. <laughs> I want a t-shirt. I think he was my boyfriend. He always texted me back. If you want to know anything about the modern woman, if you text me back before my friends do, you are my boyfriend. That's how that shit works now. But it's because of him I found the one benefit of online dating, which is he was the hottest man I have ever dated in the history of my life. So everybody I've ever dated was over here, and he was over here with like kittens and rainbows and other things I enjoy Instagramming. And it's strange, because I think most people know that when you meet somebody in person, you connect. And it's through that connection that you build an attraction. And it's through that method of dating that I have accidentally dated a lot of ugly men. 
But you can't do that online. There's nothing to connect with. If you've never online dated, this is exactly what happens. You go through a really bad breakup and you're single for like a year. And you get really sad and your friends are like, oh my God, you're so sad. Maybe you should do that over there with the other sad people. <laughs> so you make new friends and they introduce you to online dating even though it's never worked out for them. So you go home, you make a profile, you cry and you judge the shit out of people. You do, it's really easy. You go, oh, those are your eyebrows? I'm not doing that. I take care of my face, maybe you should take care of yours. Oh, you mountain climb, that looks really fun. I'm not doing that. I don't have the energy or the time or the, m I'm not gonna fuck you and then mountain climb. That's a really long day. Right? I'm not doing that. And that's what you're doing. You're just judging faces and hobbies and you're really just narrowing it down to what's most important, which is do I want you to be inside me? You send all those dudes a message and you just hope that one comes back with a shitty childhood. Because that's where personality comes from. That's why I've been so charming. We'll be right back with Gotham Comedy Live's Best of the Best. Welcome back to Gotham Comedy Live's Best of the Best. You are still watching the best of Gotham Comedy Live, and it's been worth it, hasn't it? So funny. Now, your next comic's coming up. I know all of them. Larry Miller, funny guy. I met him for the first time at the Montreal Comedy Festival years ago, and he got me to do a clip with him on Leno, which was great, and I will always love him for that. And he's a great actor, too, so very funny guy. Steven Scott, hilarious nerd, but such a funny, and he'd be mad because he doesn't know he's a nerd, but he is. But he took me to the Friars Club for the first time, and we share the same birthday, so I gotta love that Leo. And then we have, who's the other one? Oh, Vic Henley. Love the Henley. He's a Southern gentleman after my own heart. These guys are funny. My dad is, a, my dad's a character. My, my, my dad, the reason my dad talks that way is, well, he doesn't talk that way, that, that'd be weird. Like, hey, Steven, and later, and then that'd be creepy. Ooh, did I just do jazz hands on a comedy show? How did, let's just keep that between us and the millions of people at home. I, uh, no, the reason my dad talks that way, my dad's a newscaster, so he's got that really deep, loud, authoritative broadcaster voice, which on TV is great, but in public, unnecessary. And the worst is when you're a little kid and you're growing up and you get in trouble and you gotta get yelled at or scolded by someone who talks like that, it puts the fear of God into you. Oh yeah, especially with my dad, who by the way was like king of the scolders. I had one of these dads, I think half the time he was inventing stuff to scold us about, because some of it didn't make sense. He actually once said this to me, he goes, hey, knock it off. You know, when I was your age, I was a lot older than you. <laughs> my, I think dad's been drinking. But the worst, though, is if ever I was so bad that my mom would have to go and, like, call him up at work. You know when moms finally are fed up? They've had, they, that's it, I'm calling your father. That was the worst, because he was ordering that newscaster frame of mind. So whenever I'd get yelled at, I always felt like I was a breaking story. Oh, yeah, he'd pick up the phone in that newscaster cadence. He didn't play. Like, how's your father? Now your mother just told me what you did. Well, I'll tell you something, mister. You're in a lot of trouble. And you're going to get it when I get home. Tonight at 11. <laughs> I was watching TV with my wife and the ad came on for that uh, eHarmony, the dating service where they say they match you up on 29 levels of compatibility. And I turned to her and said, I don't think we have any. <laughs> and she said, any what? And I said, the 29 levels of compatibility. And she said, yes, well, yes we do. I said, no, no we don't. And she said, we have all of them. And I got out the dictionary to look up, I looked up compatibility. It says, capable of living together harmoniously or getting along well together. And she said, oh my God, we don't have that. <laughs> I said, that's the point, that's good. There's n marriage has nothing to do with compatibility, okay? First time you can't make a house payment, it doesn't matter that you both like red. Thanks, everybody. Uh, I'm from Alabama originally. That's where my accent's from. So, but I've lived here for 30 years, so blow me. I'm a New Yorker. So, 
I just wanted to let you know that's where the accent's from. So I, anyway, I was home. Uh, I was home a few months ago in Alabama visiting my mom, and I took her to dinner, and uh, we were having a lovely meal, and I ordered Caesar salad, and uh, I'm not changing one word of this. The 19, 20 year old Alabama something hillbilly waitress comes back and looks at me with a totally straight face and says, The cook said to tell you that we're out of Caesar leaves. <laughs> right, okay. Sometimes in comedy, you see something, you have an idea, you go on stage, you work it out a couple of weeks on the stages of New York City, and it actually turns into a joke. And then sometimes in comedy, you're just sitting at dinner with your mother and the heavens open up. <laughs> And a moron flies in on a Pegasus unicorn of idiocy and with a completely straight face goes, the cook said to tell you we're out of Caesar leaves. I was like, Romaine? She goes, I don't know. He just said to tell you that we're out of Caesar leaves. My mom is uh, my mom. My mom is funny too with the messages. She, her problem is the opposite. My mom will call you up. You know, if somebody has a, a story to tell you, they'll they'll call you up on your machine and they'll say, uh, they'll say, "Hey, dude, I got a funny story. Call me back." And, and then you call them back and they tell you the story. My mom just leaves the entire story on the answering machine, <laughs> and it's not even important stuff. It's like where she went shopping that day, medical updates from distant family members I haven't seen since I'm eight. You know, so I basically got a brand new phone number just for my parents to leave me their crazy messages. And I have a good old fashioned answering machine to go with it, with the button. So now when I'm home and they call, I listen to their messages like this. Beep. Hi, sweetie, it's your mother, remember me? I'm the woman who gave birth to you. It's been three days and I would like to know that you're still alive. Look at me, I'm sitting here and I am reading through the obituary column. And I am not seeing your name any place. So I'm expecting a call, love you, Beep. Yeah, see what's your father here, I'm in the car, your mother's calling. I don't know where you are. So, of course. Hi, sweetie, guess who? I love guess who, like I have no idea whose voice. Just, sweetie, it's mom. Where are you? Wait, <laughs> Lunch next weekend, because it's your sister's birthday. And everyone's coming over, and we're <laughs> shopping yesterday, and I bought the most beautiful 30% <laughs> off. I couldn't believe it. And the woman with him, because Aunt Sylvia's stool sample came back from the lab. I don't know, the duck. When I was nine, Well, that was it. This was live at Gotham Comedy Club. There's no more to show you now. I'm sorry. Don't be sad. Think about what you just saw. Go to sleep happy. Don't look at your life. Just watch the comedy. That's what I do. <laughs> Kelly, could you please rub the bar just a little louder? Is there any fucking way you could do that? In the last final second, she's got to rub the bar so fucking loud. Poor kid. It's okay. Don't feel bad. That's how she builds character. Watch us on Thursday night on Access TV, live at Gotham Comedy Club. You won't, it'll, it'll keep you from beating your children.